Have you ever wondered what happens to the millions of cars that are taken off the road each year? Far from disappearing into scrapyards, many of them begin a surprising second life. They are transformed into new steel. Behind this process is one of the largest and most efficient industrial chains in the world, capable of converting scrap into the metal that supports buildings, bridges and even the cars of the future. You'll discover how an old car can be reborn as the basis for the next generation of steel. The planet's largest supply of recycled steel doesn't come from underground mines, but from a much more common source – cars that have reached the end of their life cycle. The automotive recycling industry, also known as the second life of the car, has become one of the most powerful sources of reusable steel in the world. In the United States alone, more than 12 million vehicles are dismantled and recycled each year. These vast scrap yards function as artificial mines capable of producing tons of metal without ever having to extract a single rock. Every car that reaches the end of its journey on the road begins a new journey, in which its parts are transformed to be reborn into another product, building or machine. When you buy a new car, it can cost tens of thousands of dollars. But even 10 years later, when its useful life seems over, it still retains enormous value in raw materials. Behind that apparent pile of metal is a global industry valued at more than $60 billion annually, dedicated to recovering metals and reusable materials. This system not only creates jobs for hundreds of thousands of people, but also drastically reduces smelting costs and environmental impact. Each recycled car saves up to 74% of the energy that would be needed to produce new steel from virgin ore. It could be said that end-of-life vehicles have become an inexhaustible artificial resource. On average, nearly 75% of a car's total weight can be recovered. Steel, aluminum, plastics, glass, and even synthetic fibers. Every ton recycled is transformed into raw material for new buildings, household appliances, or even the vehicles that will travel the roads of the future. The automotive recycling process begins with the vehicle's arrival at the plant. In this first stage, a team of specialized technicians records all the vehicle's essential information, its vehicle identification number, VIN, engine number, year of manufacture, make, model, and general condition. At the same time, the corresponding documentation is reviewed to ensure that the vehicle has been officially deregistered and that its origin is legitimate. Each car is photographed from different angles to visually record its condition and then receives a label with a unique tracking code. This information is entered into a digital system that documents every step of the process, from receipt to final recycling. Thanks to this control, it is possible to track the destination of each part and material, ensuring transparency, traceability and efficiency throughout the entire chain. From there, specialists perform a detailed technical evaluation to determine the vehicle's true value. Key components such as the engine, gearbox, electrical system, electronic modules, interior, doors and dashboard are inspected. The parts that still function properly are carefully disassembled and sorted for resale within the reusable auto parts market, an industry worth millions of dollars each year. Cars with severe structural damage or extreme wear are classified as unrecoverable and sent directly to the dismantling area where a new phase begins, complete material recovery. There, what was once a complete vehicle will become an invaluable source of steel, aluminum, copper, glass and plastics, ready to begin another production cycle. Before disassembling the car, the most dangerous components must be removed – batteries and fluids. First, the battery one of the parts with the greatest electrical risk, is removed. Lead-acid batteries, typical of conventional cars, are more than 98% recyclable, as their materials, lead, plastic and sulfuric acid, can be reused to make new batteries. In the case of lithium batteries, common in electric vehicles, the protocol is stricter. They are carefully dismantled, isolated in secure containers and sent to specialized facilities. Next comes the fluids, gasoline, engine oil, transmission fluid, brake fluid, coolant and air conditioning gas. The vehicle is raised on a platform and a hydraulic system pierces the tank to connect a high-pressure vacuum pump. Within minutes, all the fluids are extracted and stored in underground tanks. Nothing is wasted. Much of the recovered fluid is filtered and reused within the plant itself to power forklifts, generators and industrial machinery, reducing the operation's energy costs. 
The entire system is sealed with sensors and safety valves that prevent leaks or vapors, ensuring a safe and contamination-free environment. Once drained, the car moves to the disassembly area. Here, large and bulky parts are removed, starting with the wheels. Tires, which take decades to decompose, are ground into tiny rubber grains used to pave roads or make sport surfaces. The metal rings, made of steel or aluminum, are separated and sent directly to the foundries. The windshields and windows are then removed. The laminated glass includes an internal PVB plastic layer that prevents it from shattering. Both materials, glass and PVB, are recovered and reused in products such as acoustic insulation or industrial coatings. The doors, which combine metal structures with electric motors, cables and locks, are disassembled piece by piece. Each component is carefully separated to recover copper, magnets, plastics and steel. The car's interior is completely disassembled. The seats, dashboards and carpets are removed and sorted. The wires are stripped to extract the copper, while the fabrics and plastics are shredded and transformed into new materials for industry. Finally, the engine and transmission, the vehicle's heaviest and most valuable components, are removed. Some are reconditioned for sale, while others are disassembled to obtain aluminum, steel and precious metals from the catalytic converter. This systematic process maximizes the utilization of each part and leaves the chassis ready to move on to the next stage. Once the vehicle has been stripped of its engine, transmission and interior, it moves to the structural cleaning area, where a key phase begins to ensure the purity of the recycled material. At this point, powerful machines with articulated arms and hydraulic grippers remove the last traces of non-metallic components, deformed exhaust pipes, radiators, plastic parts or fragments of insulation that may still be attached to the body. Every movement of this equipment is precise and controlled. The tongs, capable of applying tens of tons of force, remove and crush any element unsuitable for casting, leaving only a clean metal structure. This process not only speeds up work, but also prevents risks such as fires, explosions and steel contamination during further processing. Structural cleaning is a critical step. It acts as a pre-filter before compaction. By removing flammable materials or impurities, it protects heavy machinery and improves the quality of the recovered metal. In a matter of minutes, what was once a complete automobile becomes a uniform skeleton of steel and aluminum, solid, organized and fully prepared for the pressing process that will reduce its volume and transform it into a compact block ready for its next transformation. The next step involves reducing the chassis size. Using a hydraulic press weighing between 150 and 200 tons, the entire vehicle structure is compressed into a compact block that occupies just one-tenth of its original volume. There are different types of machines for this job. Balers produce dense steel cubes that are easy to store and transport. Rollers, used in medium or small plants, they crush the car into thin sheets. Hydraulic shears, these cut the vehicle into smaller sections ready to be melted or crushed. Although the methods vary, the goal is always the same, to convert a bulky car into uniform metal ready for crushing. The compacted blocks are fed into an industrial crusher, considered the heart of automotive recycling. Inside, steel shafts with giant teeth rotate in opposite directions, shredding the body in seconds. The sound is deafening, tons of metal colliding as the car disappears, reduced to fragments of scrap metal. A single modern crusher can process more than 100 tons of steel per hour, transforming hundreds of vehicles every day. After crushing, a conveyor belt carries the mixture of materials to a sorting line. There, large magnets separate the steel. Eddy currents separate the aluminum and copper, while plastics, rubber and textiles are removed from the process. From a single vehicle, in less than an hour, pure and reusable metals can be recovered, ready to re-enter the production cycle. The recovered steel blocks are grouped together and transported to an electric arc furnace where they reach temperatures exceeding 1,600 degrees Celsius. Graphite electrodes release lightning-sized electrical currents, completely melting the scrap in a matter of minutes. During the process, lime and other fluxes are added to remove impurities, while oxygen lances remove unwanted elements. Sensors and spectroscopic analysis constantly monitor the composition of the liquid steel to ensure it meets industry standards. The result is a shiny mass of pure molten steel ready to be turned into new blocks of material. The liquid metal is immediately channeled into the continuous casting line where it flows into water-cooled molds. 
There it gradually solidifies, forming a hardened outer layer, while the red-hot inner core moves through a series of rollers that shape it. This process produces square bills and steel plates weighing several tons. Each one is cut, numbered, and digitally recorded before moving on to the final stage. The red-hot steel billets are transported to the hot rolling mill, a complex system of giant rollers that crush and stretch them into uniform sheets or coils of steel. Cameras and laser sensors monitor thickness and straightness with millimetre precision. It's a process that combines brute force and technological precision, in which the metal seems to come alive under pressure. Once rolled, the steel cannot be cooled suddenly. Controlled cooling is applied. High-pressure nozzles spray water, forming a white mist that lowers the temperature without causing fractures. Industrial fans then blow air along the coils to allow gradual cooling that preserves the internal structure of the metal. Each coil undergoes rigorous inspections. Ultrasonic sensors detect invisible cracks. High-resolution cameras scan the surface. Mechanical equipment tests its resistance. Only steel that passes all controls is stamped, labelled and stored as finished material. From a vehicle that seemed destined for abandonment, a new essential resource emerges. Recycled steel is turned into beams for buildings, bridge structures, heavy machinery, and even the cars that will one day replace the ones we drive today. Each stage, from initial disassembly to final lamination, represents a double win, economic and environmental. Recycling a single car saves tons of minerals, thousands of litres of fuel, and significantly reduces the ecological footprint. The automotive recycling industry proves that scrap metal isn't an end, it's a new beginning. What was once a disused vehicle can be reborn as part of a city, a machine or a road.